We always make the argument. The purists can always make the argument. Well, Bill was forcing the talent to be more creative. Yes, but you know, somebody like Pillman at that time or later Sabu and ECW take the top rope away from them, and you've really neutralized like their gifts. <laughs> There's a meeting backstage at this pay-per-view. All talent meeting, uh, so I'm presuming you were there. So under the specter of the burgeoning WWF versus WCW Monday Night Wars, an all talent meeting occurred earlier in the day for all talent where Vince McMahon announced that Bill Watts would be heading up the booking end and creative aspects of the WWF of the WWF going forward. Uh, does that jog your memory, Shane? Yes, yeah. Big news to me because, like, I again, I got my break with Bill Watts, and he had a great head for the for the business, but he also had that that overbearing personality, larger than life, uh, overbearing personality. So I was curious to see, like, a on the surface, it was good news to me because I knew he valued my work, um, and I thought he would take in a different direction because I knew the one thing with Bill Watts was Bill Watts fervently believes counter to Vince that the heels should should be predominant the baby face should always be chasing and getting screwed um where vince thinks the fans should always go i'm happy so for me that was a welcome thing to hear and and it would play out in some interesting ways with um with that being said bill gets up uh basically makes a speech saying that he's taken over the creative reins but vince mcmahon uh, will have final say, but he will not be butting in with his own opinions. Now, that's as we know, it was pretty laughable because I think Bill Watts lasts yeah. about three weeks, and then Vince McMahon just screws up all his creative, and then he says, "There's only one, what's the famous line? There's only one Titan in Titan Sports, and you're it, Vince. I'm going back home to Bixby." Yeah. So I didn't even write that down. I remembered that. So anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> with the introduction of Watts, uh, apparently. Uh, especially, uh, okay, there's a couple of things with this, so bear with me, my mind's all over the place. Uh, especially considering he made a decent amount of enemies for himself in WCW as well. Do you remember the, the the talent's reaction when Bill Watts is announced? Yeah, I I think for the going right down along, like sort of like today, Republican and Democrat, right? So if uh, if you were on the Vince side of the fence and were a babyface, and you knew Vince loved pushing babyfaces, and you understood what Bill was, I'm sure you probably went like, ooh, shit, like this ain't good for us. And, you know, for those of us that were heels and had worked for Bill before, um, again, like I've said a thousand times, I, I never advocated his style. But as I got older, and I'm, how many times in interviews you heard me say, well, Bill Watts taught me this, or I learned that from Bill Watts. He certainly knew the craft. And, I, I, and I'm one of the people that agree with the heel being, you know, if the heel is always subservient to the baby face, to me, that makes the baby face almost obnoxious, right? Like he's good. He knows he's good. And he proves that he's good. Uh, there's a reason there's kryptonite in, in Superman comic books. And, uh, you know, to me, like the heel, that's the whole point, right? Is, is the heel is such a dastardly villain that the baby face just gets screwed and gets screwed and gets screwed. It's, I don't know of a time that the fans ever went, well, that he'll screw that baby face. I'm never supporting him again or her again, right? If anything, it's like, oh, I've got to be more behind him because he's got to get this jerk. And, uh, you know, so I we saw it as a, as a good thing. But, you know, Bill and his zeal, zeal in, in WCW putting in the no top rope rule. Um, it's like, you know, you, you can't the take- the as well, didn't he? Yes, they're yeah. on the floor, and you know we weren't allowed to be out of the ring. Couldn't go over the railing, you know things like that. That uh, that wrestling had already started to dip its toe into pretty hard, if not impossible, to pull back from that. And uh, you know you, you could always make the argument. The purists could always make the argument. Well, Bill was forcing the talent to be more creative. Yes, but you know somebody Pillman at that time, or later Sabu and ECW, take the top rope away from them, and you've really neutralized like their gifts. So, uh, yeah, there, and I'm sure there was a lot of the guys on, on the heel side of the fence that saw Watts, you know, with that, oh, furry eyeball, right? Like, uh, I remember my feeling like it was going to be, this was more positive than negative. And I think in large part, because I thought that Vince would sort of tamp down those rougher edges and free Bill up to be creative. And, and, uh, you know, and I thought, I think Bill has now reached the place where I wish he would have reached then, you know, and found in the serenity and religion, and you know, become a, he's a, 
if you see him now, he looks so calm. So Bill always looked like he was ready to explode. And, uh, you know, I'm happy that he's found that. Uh, I wish he would have had at least a, an inkling of finding that at the time where he could have self-censored himself in places that eh, maybe this ain't the best way to approach this.